Most people want to have greater peace in their own mindset, but they don't really understand what creates it and what destroys it. Driven Mofos, welcome back to another episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur. Let's today talk about your own inner serenity and inner peace. Now, I was just reading a piece from a famous philosopher called Epictetus. And some days I just I grab books and I just randomly open them and just read certain pages. And I find that there's something in there that resonates with me on that day. And so today I opened up one of Epictetus's books and it says here, I want to read this to you. And the heading is, the good life is a life of inner serenity. And so it says here, the surest sign of the higher life is serenity. Moral progress results in freedom from inner turmoil. Okay, so that is important, moral progress. But what does moral progress mean? Now, what most people don't understand is that your values essentially create your morality. So when we're living our values and we're true and congruent to our values, it allows us to open up to this inner serenity. So we actually get mind peace. But the reason why we get mind peace is because our moral compass is engaged or in line with what we want. So this morning, my alarm went off, got straight out of bed, walked downstairs, grabbed my coffee, did my weigh in. And I'm ready to rock and roll for the day. Did my social media posting, did my daily 100, which if you don't know what that is, make sure you jump on and follow me on Instagram. But essentially the daily 100 is doing 100 of something throughout the day in order to challenge yourself, to show yourself that you're committed to doing something consistently. So every day of the week, there is an exercise which you need to do 100 reps of. So today was 100 push-ups. Now I think tomorrow is like 100 squats or something like that. But by getting up and doing that, it puts me in a winning state straight away. So my alarm goes off, I get straight out of bed. There's a win. Go downstairs, do my weigh-in. Second win. Now I'm already like two minutes into the day. I did my daily 100, there's another win. Did my social media posting, my coffee post, and then my success principle. There's another two wins. I did another post on social media on my wall, another win. And so what I'm doing is I'm just racking up the wins really, really quick. So coming back to values, the reason why I do that is because what I'm doing is I'm saying these things are important to me. Exercise is important. My mindset is important. My structure of my day first thing in the morning is important to me. And so what I'm doing is I'm racking up these wins in regards to my values. Then I did a little bit of learning. Jess came downstairs. I spent like 15 minutes with her. We had a bit of a chat, had a bit of a cuddle. I'm just racking up these wins throughout my day by making sure I'm living my values. So we've got to remember that morality is based on values and values are normally based on an individual value system. So in Australia, we have Catholic values or Christian values or whatever you want to call it. But essentially, it's a religion with values that are implanted on society. The person who dictates those values is the head of the Catholic Church or the head of the country that subscribes to the religion. So what we essentially have is implanted values as a culture on groups of people in a society. And that's how we create morals. I go into more of this in my Thrive Time event where I talk about value structures and help you really get clear on your values, which is probably the most important thing you ever figure out. But now let's come back to this stuff from Epictetus. So he says here, you can stop fretting about this and that. If you seek the higher life, refrain from such common patterns of thinking as these. If I don't work harder, I'll never earn a decent living. No one will recognize me. I'll be a nobody. If I don't criticize my employees, they'll take advantage of my goodwill. And then what Epictetus goes on to say is, it is much better to die of hunger unhindered by grief and fear than to live affluently beset in the worry, dread, suspicion, and unchecked desire. So this here is really important for us to try to understand. And this is why I keep saying mindset is the greatest thing that you'll ever invest in. If you can get your mindset right, you are winning in life. Because there are people out there who make hundreds of millions of dollars who fucking hate their life. There are people who have a great family, yet they worry all the time about whether their partner's cheating on them, whether they're making enough money, whether they can go on holidays, whether bills are getting paid. Those people never live an unhindered life. Their life sucks. And unfortunately, in our society, a lot of people look at other people through the eye of desire and they go, well, that person has a better car. My life sucks. Instead of looking at their life and going, you know what? My life is fucking sick. Something that I've had to learn recently is just to keep reminding myself that my life is fucking awesome. Like I have two supercars in the garage. I live in a, you know, seven figure plus house on a lake here in Adelaide. I have an amazing partner in Jess who consistently challenges me and pushes me to be better, but also 
is always there. I have an amazing mindset that I consistently work on that I've invested millions of dollars in. I have an amazing community of people who are listening to this podcast, who watch me on social media. Like I feel so privileged in order to share this information and to be able to get paid to do what I love. And by doing that, what I do is I just go, I can't lose in life. No matter what I do, I just can't lose because I have just a great life. Now, that's different from the way most people live because they keep thinking if I can just make more money, then I'll be happy, which is bullshit. If I just have you know, a six pack, then I'll feel better. If I just have a better handbag, then I'll feel better. If I just have better staff, then I'll feel better. The truth is you never will because your frame of reference or your frame of thinking is already incorrect. You have to work on your mindset in order to win the game of life. And if you're not investing in your mindset, you're saying this shit isn't important. You know, when I have people who send me messages and they're like, I know I need to change my mind, but before I do that, I've got to do all this other shit. I'm like, eh, okay, whatever. You do you, bro. Like you just keep living your life in some fucked up way, convincing yourself that in the future, it's going to be better because of something else that you're trying to get externally. And so external validation will never create internal presence and internal peace. It won't happen. The way that you use your mind creates the internal peace and then you get to live life how you want to live, which is what everybody wants. Like I literally this morning have internal peace because I'm like, I've fucking already crushed today. Like it's eight o'clock in the morning and I'm recording this podcast. I've already won the day because I got up on time, had my coffee, weighed in. I did my daily 100 already. I've already done some reading, some research. I recorded a second podcast episode. I've done my social media posting. I've connected with Jess. And after this, I'm going to jump on and start chatting to the community on Instagram. Start finding out how I can help people. Probably get a few more people into my mid-ticket program or my mid-level program, which is my $750 per quarter program. I'll probably get some more people into that. I'll get to write their gym program. I'll get to help them with their mindset, get them on the coaching calls every week. All of the things that's going to help them to thrive. How can I not win in life when I'm helping other people win? Like it's fucking sick. I get paid for that. I get to help them win. They get to have a better life. I've already connected with Jess. I've already done some exercises this morning. Like it is good. That's why if you set your life up correctly, you get that inner peace that everybody wants. Yet people take drugs, they drink alcohol, they think that going on holidays is going to help. They think that escaping is going to help. They think that a, a new job is going to help. They think that having more staff is going to help and none of that shit helps. It just doesn't. But they just don't know it yet because they've never had that inner serenity. So that's why I love reading stuff like this from great philosophers. These are some of the greatest thinkers throughout history. You know, if you look at Epictetus, he's been around for two and a half thousand years. These books are still selling. Epictetus's work is still selling. Why? Because great thinkers think alike. Shit thinkers think alike too. Now you get to decide whether you want to be a great thinker or a shit thinker. Most people are shit thinkers. They get caught in these ideas, in these philosophies, in these theories about life because they listen to other shit thinkers. I listened to my family growing up and my mum used to stress about money every fucking day. So every day she would be stressed and peaking about money. My dad would work two jobs. On weekends, we would always go away up to the Riverland or something like that. And we had an okay life. Like we never went on nice holidays and shit like that. Like as a kid, we never went overseas. I didn't go overseas until I was 20, 21, maybe, maybe 21, 22. It was my first overseas trip to Thailand. And that was with a bunch of friends. And I used every cent that I had to go there. Came back, I was broke. Like I look back now and I go, shit, if something went wrong, I would have been in so much trouble because I had no money. But my point is, is that I didn't grow up with like this crazy lifestyle or anything like that. We would go water skiing on weekends and shit like that. So mum and dad had a little bit of money, but just every week my mum was stressed about money. She was always peeking out. She was always frustrated. She lived in an ideal. And this is why I try to help so many people now because my mum lived in an idealistic world. She thought when we have more money, then I'll be free. When everything's done around the house and when the house is immaculate, then I can be calm. When everyone does everything that I want them to do, then I can be stress-free. So my mum used to just walk around so stressed. She was like a rubber band stretched to its limits. She was about to snap at any fucking moment, and she did. Because of her idealisms, and an idealism or an idealistic way of thinking is the perfect. So if she had the perfect kids who did really well at school, then she would be happy. But the truth is, no matter what we did, she was never fucking happy. If she had no money stress, then she would be happy. 
But the truth is she was never happy because like I remember my parents worked extremely hard to pay off their first home and they paid off their first home when I was 10 years of age. So 10 years, my mum and dad just worked flat out and put every cent into the house and they paid off their first home. The first thing they did was when they paid off their home, they went out and sold that house and they bought a bigger house and then it had to be renovated. So for like six or seven years, they spent that time just renovating the house. So my dad's a builder, has worked in the building industry. So there was always shit going on at the house, but mum would get home from work and she'd be fucking stressed out and she'd be peeking because there was dust everywhere and there was shit everywhere. So she'd be spewing and fucking going off her tree. And then she'd be spewing and going off her tree that they didn't have enough money to pay for the next batch of the renovation. So my mum was just always stressed. And if my mum had worked and someone else wasn't working, she would lose her shit. So if I was sitting on the couch watching TV, after even getting up early, doing whatever I needed to do around the house, making my own breakfast, going to school. I remember like I would have to leave for school at seven o'clock in the morning to catch the fucking train into the city and then go to school, catch a bus and so on and go to school. And then I'd get home at like 4.30 in the afternoon after catching a train home and then walking the rest of the way home, which was like a couple of kilometers. I would get home. I would probably eat some food. I'd probably clean up around the place because I knew mum would freak out. And then my mum would walk in the front door and she'd still lose her shit about something. So what I saw was this woman who was massively unhinged and couldn't control her own internal states and her emotions because everything was based on this external perception of everything being perfect, of having accomplished all these things. You know, if she just had all this money, if she just had the house renovations finished, if she just had this lifestyle, if her kids were just perfect, then she wouldn't be stressed. But the truth is she had kids. Myself and my sister were completely different people. My sister was very calm, very relaxed. I was highly strung, stressed out, probably had ADHD that was undiagnosed, had dyslexia, was always in trouble at school. I got picked on quite a lot for having bright red hair and freckles, so I used to fight kids all the time. So I was always in fucking trouble. My sister was like the golden child. She would just go to school, plod along, just do you know whatever she could do to just get by. She would fly under the radar, whereas I never did. So my mum would lose her shit all the time. My dad would work two jobs and my mum would get upset with him and and lose her shit for whatever reason. And my dad was very passive like my sister. So my dad would never really stand up for himself. And so I had to learn to stand up for myself. So me and my mum used to clash all the time. But that was all just based on my mum's inability to manage her own mindset. Her inability to understand that what she loved was both my mum and my dad love working. They're both hard workers. So instead of going to work every day and going, you know what, I love working. My mum would go to work and go, I have to go to work because I have to make money because I've got to pay for everything for you fucking kids. And then I've got to pay the mortgage and everything like that to support this family. And so everything was about everything else apart from her. And so she just lived this unhinged life. Like her mindset was just chaotic and erratic. You know, on weekends, we would go away up to the Riverland and go water skiing. Even there, she was like, well, you kids need to do this. You need to do that. How come you didn't clean up after yourself? Even though like... I've always been pretty clean. I always got up in the morning. I've made my bed from a young age because if not, my mum would lose her shit. I still make the bed every morning. But what that did was that put pressure on me. And so that's how I grew up as well. I grew up with this inability to control my own emotions and my own thoughts because I would compare my life to the ideal. I would look at everybody else and go, wow, they've got a better house. They look happy. I'm not happy. Therefore, I must have to have a better house. They're making more money than me. They look happy. I must have to make more money so that then I can be happy. So then I'm chasing money. And so I lived this life where I was so stressed all the time. I would get stressed at staff. I would get stressed at clients. I would get stressed at myself. I would lose sleep because I was anxious. I'm like, fuck, I've got to be able to pay the bills this week. And we haven't had a good week in sales. And so I'm just stressed all of the time. And I didn't realize that it wasn't until I learned how to control my mind that everything became easy. That if I just focus on just looking after me every day. If I just wake up, live a sick life, just do what I have to do, right? So if I wake up, do my posting on social media, I know that eventually I'm going to get clients because I know that people are watching me going, this guy is relentless. I want that. This guy is disciplined. I want that. This guy's got control of his mindset. I want that. This guy's able to control and lead his staff more effectively. I want that. This guy has been able to manage his health and been training since he was 13. He is now 40. In that amount of time, I have not gone longer than a week without exercising. I've not gone longer than a week since I was 13. I've just always exercised. I can go a couple of days. I might take half a week off. I can't remember a time I've taken a full week off of exercise. Maybe I have 
every now and again, but like, I can't remember them because it is so fucking rare. I hope that people see my relationship with Jess and say, I want that as well. That has not come easy. That has been me learning a lot about communication, about my mindset, about controlling my emotions, especially under stress and especially under pressure, understanding masculine and feminine energy, doing the work on myself. So what I realize is that the more that I work on me, the greater my life is, but also the greater the influence I have over others. And if you're someone who's listening to this, who is a parent, who is a business owner, who is just trying to achieve something in life, if you're doing that and you're doing it in a way where you can manage yourself, you're winning in life, but you can't live life based on an ideal. So that's why I love Epictetus's quote here. He says, if you seek the higher life, refrain from such common patterns of thinking such as these. If I don't work harder, I'll never earn a decent living. Now, how many of you out there are stressed about money or thinking that I've got to work hard all the time and I always have to push myself in order to live some form of lifestyle? You're in this life of desire. Now, there's something that I came across right now. I don't know that I necessarily believe this. Years ago when I was studying New Age spirituality, they have this chart and it is a frequency chart. That frequency chart talks about emotions and it says that these different emotional states pull us into different frequencies. Now that I believe. But it says in there that enlightenment is the highest level of consciousness. Now, I believe that that is true because if you study physics, when light separates, it becomes a particle and an antiparticle, right? This is quantum physics or quantum theory. This is physics. So we get a particle and an antiparticle, which is called a positron and an electron. That's the positive and negative charge. Now, that is normally done through something called the observer effect. Now, stay with me. Don't lose me here because I'll bring it back and help you to understand if you don't understand physics. I go through a lot more about this in my courses and I explain this in detail because there's a lot of bullshit out there around people use the word physics and quantum physics. A lot of it is bullshit. It's new age spirituality wrapped up in the idea of science and it's not true. Light, when it comes together, light is the fastest recorded thing that we can measure, right? So it's supposedly light. Light is the fastest speed. So if we look at enlightenment, enlightenment supposedly is this state of mind where we become light again. Now, that is a state of being which is only momentary. And you might have had a moment of enlightenment where you get an aha moment. That is a point of enlightenment, according to great philosophers. But then under that, it says there is peace. Now, normally peace and enlightenment, gratitude and love are the same things if you go and study the great philosophers. This chart here has broken them apart. So it says that love is less of a frequency than enlightenment. But I think that is completely wrong because love is the symmetry of two sides. So when you love your kids, you know that they're your dream and your nightmare. And if you see them in a moment where you actually experience true love for them, it's almost like in that moment you have love, gratitude, presence, wisdom. And it's almost like this sense of enlightenment where you just are like, life is amazing in that moment. According to the great philosophers, that is the highest frequency, the highest point of existence. Okay, we could call it that. Now, down below that, you have things like acceptance, reason, and so on. I think reason is wisdom. Now, when we're wise, we see both sides. So maybe that's a little bit under enlightenment. But as we go down, this is the real important part. As we go down, when we go below the neutral point, there are things there like it says there anger, desire, fear, grief, guilt, apathy, and shame. Now, this is why I love this. Whether it's scientifically valid or not, I don't think it is. But the point of this chart is really that when we live above the neutral point, we're in a state of presence, gratitude, love, wisdom, where we're looking at the best of things, you know, we're seeing the best in ourselves, where we're living in a world where there's opportunity, where there's growth, where there is abundance. But when we drop below that sort of mid-level, we go down into things like desire. So when people desire money and they're like, I've got to make more money, that's desire. When they go, I have to get a new car, that's desire. I've got to have a better body, that's desire. I have to have a better relationship. That's desire. I have to get more stuff. That's desire. When we start to drop below that neutral state, we start to have more of these negative emotions or negative experiences, which pull us out of living in the moment, being present and enjoying life. And I think that's a really important thing to understand. So desires there. Then we have fear, the fear of not being good enough, the fear of not making enough money, the fear of loss, the fear of not having enough, the fear of 
the what ifs, right? All of these things drive us back into fear. That does not lead to a good life. Now, thinking through things, yeah, that's probably going to help you and be beneficial. But when we're sitting there and going, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? When we're living in that fear and we're worried about things all the time, that does not lead to a pleasurable life. Now, you've heard me talk about this before. Circuits in the brain that fire together, wire together. So the more we think a certain way, the more we keep thinking that way because that circuit gets stronger. The more we keep thinking a certain way, the more it changes our hormonal state and the more we get emotional drivers. So our thoughts essentially create our emotions. And when we have a thought habit and that habit is created over time through the firing and wiring of that circuit based on how we think, that circuit gets stronger, which then makes the emotions more consistent and also stronger over time. So when someone's sitting there and they're fear-driven, they're driven by desire that if I can just have more of this, if I can just get there, then I'm not going to have these fears, these worries, these stresses and concerns. That thinking is getting stronger. It's becoming a habit. That then changes our hormonal state or our chemical state in our body. That gives us our feelings. So now we have a thought process that has become a habit. So people that are fear-driven just think more about fear. People that are desire-driven think more about desire. Well, what if I had a better relationship? What if my partner was better? What if I didn't have all this negative shit? What about if the kids were just amazing and just did what I wanted them to do all the time and lived the way that I wanted them to live? Then life would be better. You keep thinking like that. You keep driving those same emotions and feeling anxious and stressed out and burnt out and tired and frustrated. And you keep doing shit like that and you keep living like that. And then your actions show that you're erratic, you're burnt out, you're tired, you're frustrated, you drink, you take drugs, you overeat, you overconsume. You then live in a world where you earn money and then you just go and blow it all by trying to match those expectations of desire that you have. And so now you get what you desire, but then you're broke again. And all of these things create these vicious cycles that probably 99% of the population live in. So what I want you to really think about is how are you building the mindset that you want so that you can create the life that you want? This is why mindset is so important. And I'm one of the best people on the planet in this area in regards to mindset. Because what I realized a long time ago is that the more you work on your mindset, the better your life becomes. And I realized this around 21 when I invested in my first personal development product. Now, at that time, I had $230 in my bank account. It was two o'clock in the fucking morning and I was lying awake in bed and I was like, this is bullshit. My life sucks. I hate my life. You know, I wanted to end it again. It was just shit. I was not having a good time. I'd had a relationship breakdown. I was broke all the time. You know, my friends and that were drinking pretty much every night of the week, apart from Monday and Tuesday nights we had off. But other than that, every other night of the week we drunk. And so I had $230 in my bank account and this ad came on for to buy a product which was $229, I think, or $227. Now, I had to put petrol in my car to get to work the next day. And I had to decide whether I was going to spend money on petrol or whether I was going to spend money on personal development and personal growth. And I'd never done it before. I'd never spent money. And in fact, I knew that my friends, my family, everyone around me would think that this stuff is bullshit. But there was something that drew me to wanting to be better. And I got out of bed. And back in those days, you couldn't buy it online. I had to get out of bed at two o'clock in the morning, living at my mum and dad's house, walk down the fucking hallway, get the phone and dial an international number, which I knew that my mum would freak out about because it was international rates. Okay. And it was probably like, you know, $3 or $5 a minute back, you know, we're talking over 20 years ago. So that was a lot of money back then. It still is, you know, especially for a phone call. So I got up, I called this number, I went on hold, spoke to the operator, gave him my details, gave him my debit card over the phone. And then I waited a couple of weeks and this product arrived. That was the start of my personal development journey. Since then, I've spent over a million dollars on personal development, personal growth, coaches, mentors, learning, all of that stuff flying around the world to be around the best people so that I can keep learning. And from there, life has gotten greater and I still have to keep learning. I learn every day. That's the reason why I read Epictetus because I have to learn every day to put myself in the right state of mind to remind myself of the great thinkers and how they think so that I can tune my mind. This just freaks me out and I find it really weird that people can wake up and go to the gym and exercise and they go, well, if I go to the gym consistently, I'm going to feel better about myself and I'm probably going to have a better body, right? We agree that that's probably a good idea. Now, I would say that 90% of the population don't do that. 90% of the population won't go to the gym every day or exercise every day anyway. So there's 10% of people who probably do that. That 10% of people probably have a higher likelihood of having better health than the 90% of people who don't. 
So we know that doing a little bit of exercise every day is better for our health. Then from there, most of the population is going to look for a 12-week challenge or something like that because they're going to want the shortcut. They're going to want the easy option. They're not going to be thinking about the habit. They're driven by desire. They think that by having a better body, life's going to be better for them. When the truth is it's not. It's the habit that's going to make life better for them. That living life in a way where you wake up and exercise every day, whether you like it or you don't, is probably going to be better for you long term. We look at that and we go, well, that makes sense. Most people work from Monday to Friday because they know that Monday to Friday, if they do that, they're probably going to have a higher likelihood of getting ahead financially in some way, shape or form by working a job and by building the habit of going to work five days a week. Now, if you work seven days a week, you're probably going to earn a little bit more than someone who only works five days a week. We all get that. But my question is, how many of you wake up in the morning and think, if I just tune my mindset, if I just get my head in the right place, if I'm consistently growing mentally and emotionally, and if I'm investing in my mindset, I build a better mindset. So if I build a better mindset, what's the likelihood that I'm going to feel better about life? Probably pretty fucking high. Now, if I feel better about life, what's the likelihood that I'm going to earn more money, have a better relationship, have a better body, and be a better parent and have a better life? Probably pretty fucking high. But when you speak to most people and you go, would you invest $1,000 on your car? Would you invest $1,000 in your home? Would you invest $1,000 in your mindset? Most people will invest money everywhere apart from their mindset and then wonder why they don't have the life that they want. Yet they keep buying cars, they keep putting extensions on their home, they keep painting their home, they keep buying clothes, they keep going on holidays with their family, they keep you know, going out for dinners and shit like that. They will do everything else apart from the fucking thing that makes them have a good life, which is get their mindset right. After that, you start winning. And when you win in your mindset, everything else becomes a win. It's crazy. It's like the 180 degrees around. But my point is, everybody, you have to start to work on you. You have to think about those supposedly on this frequency chart, whether I agree with it or not. What I do agree with is that if you put yourself in the right state every day and you set yourself up to win based on love, gratitude, wisdom, presence, and you're more present throughout the day, you're going to feel better about life. Once you start dropping down into desire, grief, greed, fear, apathy, shame, resentment, all of those things, you are going to live a shitty life. Now, I'm not saying that, like there are moments that that will happen, but if you can pull yourself back out above that line, you're just going to feel way better about life. Now, if 99% of your day is above the line, you're going to feel wicked. If 90% of your day is below the line, you're going to feel like dog shit. Your life is going to be crap. And for most people, that's their whole entire life. How do I know this? Because I've worked with tens of thousands of people. I speak to people every day on social media. Like I normally do about a minimum of 30 direct messages every day. When I'm doing sales calls and I go through stages of hitting the phones hard, I would say that probably 99.999% of people live below the line. And they're always trying to get something or get somewhere in order to enjoy life. Instead of realizing that life is enjoyable today and that when you enjoy the process of doing the things that you need to do to enjoy life, Life's automatically going to get better. Like I love working, so I work, which means that I get to make good money. I love learning, so I do more of it. The more that I learn, the more I invest in learning, the more I work, the more money I make. The more money I make, the more I put back into learning, enjoying life, traveling, figuring things out. It's a self-fulfilling life. But most of you haven't figured that out. You think that one day if I do all these things right, eventually I'll get there but it will never happen. If you live the other way, which is if I invest in me, if I invest in my mindset, if I get my head right, then I get to enjoy today and I get to enjoy work. I get to enjoy my business. I get to enjoy my staff. I get to enjoy my partner. I get to enjoy my kids. I've already won. After that, everything else is a bonus. What's the likelihood I'm going to have better conversations, make more money, work more, be more consistent, be more reliable, win more jobs? Because even if I lose a job, it still doesn't matter. I was talking to a client of mine yesterday who's probably listening to this now. This guy is phenomenal. He came into our events. His business was doing about $12 million a year in revenue. In two years, when I was speaking to him yesterday, well, he sent me a message about a month and a half ago and said, we just cracked over the $50 million mark. Thank you so much for your help. Like, I'm loving this. He's signed up with me for one-on-one coaching. Here's something that's mind-blowing. I get people who sign up to my low-ticket product, $47 a month, right? Cheap as shit. It's Dominate. And after two months, they send me a message and go, oh, I just want to cancel my membership. And I say, why? And they go, I don't have time to do this shit. And I go, okay, why? Oh, man, it's just I'm busy. Like everything's going on. I'm just, you know, and I listen to them. I'm like, your life fucking sucks. And you can't even rock up for one hour a week to better yourself. You're a fucking loser. You're a dropkick. And that is exactly why you should fucking rock up every week. Now, 
The dude who's got a $12 million a year revenue business is already doing really well. He is on almost every one of my mindset coaching calls, every one of my business coaching calls. He does one-on-one with me. He's at my business growth odyssey events. He comes and does my Thrive Time event. He'll have done that twice this year. He's doing my leadership course because he knows the more knowledge that he consumes, the more he bathes himself, the better his life gets. So his growth has been phenomenal. Anyway, I was speaking to him yesterday and he goes, oh, you know, I know last month we just cracked over or last month, two months ago, we cracked over that 50 million. He's like, we probably are at 60 million now in revenue this year. He just keeps cranking, but he's loving life. He's enjoying it. His relationships got better. His health's got better. He's dropped weight. He's put on muscle. Like he's just loving life. Anyway, we're having this conversation. He said, look, we're going for this job tomorrow, this tender. And he's like, I just want to know how I deal with it because, you know, I don't want to lose it. Like, I really want to get this job. Anyway, we start talking through it. And he says, well, actually, you know what? It is a bit of a shit job because there's a lot of work that's going to go on in the job. It's going to be like a year's worth of work. He said, like, I want to make sure that we win the job. And I said, well, here's the thing. You're thinking about the loss at the moment. You're caught up about what if we lose? Here's the cool thing. If you lose the job, and this is an even if, even if I lose the job, it's going to be good for us anyway, because I don't have to hire more staff. I don't have to put on more people and we don't have to do a shitty job. But at the same time, if we win it, how cool is that? Because we get to grow the business. We bring on more staff. We're going to bring on more people and it's going to be a really tough, challenging job. What I explained to him is that you have to frame it in a way where no matter what happens, you win. If we don't win the job, how cool is that? Because I don't have to do this job that's tough. I don't have to hire more staff. We don't have to bring on more people. There's going to be more complications. You know, yeah, it might be a $10 million job, but at the same time, I don't have to deal with all the extra bullshit. Now, if we win the job, how cool is that? Because we get to grow, we get to expand. It's going to be challenging. You know, it is a really tough job, but it does suck. So I'm going to have to work on that and make sure that I have good leadership skills to make sure that everyone else feels good about this job also. So when you learn how to use your mindset, you can frame anything in a way where you win. Versus looking at things through a lens of desire, of greed, of shame, of resentment, of frustration, of all of these, you know, shitty emotional states that will just keep you trapped for the rest of your life. That's how you win in life. People don't understand this. They'll come to me and they go, oh, you're lucky because you've got a McLaren. And I'm like, I don't give a shit about the car. You give a shit about the car because you think that a car is going to make you happy. I don't give a fuck about my car. I love my car because I get to drive it. I think it's fucking cool. I've worked extremely hard for it. But at the same time, I get to take friends out in it. I get to take clients out in it. That's the shit that I love. I get to rock up somewhere and watch a little kid have their mindset blown by how cool the car is. That's why I enjoy the car. But at the same time, my life doesn't get worse if I don't have it. I will still wake up tomorrow and do exactly the same shit that I did today. I'll wake up. I'll do my daily 100. I'll have a coffee. Even if it's the world's shittest coffee, I'll still have a coffee. I'll do some exercise today. I'll connect with people. I'll keep working on my mindset. So my life doesn't get worse whether I have stuff or don't have stuff. And that's where most of you are stuck because you think that life's going to get better the more stuff you have and the more you achieve. When the truth is it doesn't. It is your daily disciplines. It is your daily habits. It is your mindset that will keep you winning the game of life. And until you get that clear, you will never win in life. And I know that most of you today are going to fucking suffer because the moment that something happens that doesn't live up to your ideal, you're going to drop into a negative mindset, you're going to drop into a negative state, and then all of a sudden you're just going to be back in that shitty way of living. And that's what frustrates me about these people that come into my $47 a month program and then pull out within a month or two and say bullshit like, I don't have the time, or you know, I'm just not using it. You fucking should. You're the one that needs it more than anyone. You're joining my lowest ticket program, the lowest fucking level. You're coming in at the lowest level and you can't even do that shit. That shows you how fucking low your thinking is. Whereas someone like this client, the one that I'm talking about comes in, he started off at Thrive Time. He paid three grand. Bang. What else do you have? Jumps into my business growth odyssey, slams down 30K a year, puts millions of dollars into his business, then goes bang. What else do you have? I'm ready to go again. Like, so he re-signed for business odyssey again drops another 15 or 20K. Then I said, if you want, let's do one-on-one. Bang, another 40 or 50K down. So he's spent like 50 or 60,000 bucks in the last, well, actually it might be more, in the last probably three to four months. 
But what's happening is he keeps wiring his brain to think different. His life's getting better. He's enjoying it more. He's putting more revenue into his business. Everything else is just a reflection of him. The more abundance he has, the more he enjoys life, the more enjoyable life becomes. And the more he sees the game of life as just a game and he's having fun, he's enjoying it. Most of you will never get that. You know, old mate, $47 a month. I don't have fucking time. I need to pull out. I just don't have time to listen to this shit. That's why your business is a fucking dog shit. And I hope you're listening to this because you know who you are. That's why your business is a dog shit. That's why you've started like ever since I've known you and I've known you like, what, about six years. In six years, you've had multiple failed businesses. You've had multiple financial struggles. You've had multiple relationship breakdowns. Your health has gone from gaining weight to losing weight. All of this shit happens because you cannot fucking regulate your mindset. So if you're listening to this and this is like a punch in your face, I hope that it is. Because if you're always looking for the easy option, the cheap option, you're always coming in expecting that something outside of you is going to make your life better, then you're fucking delusional and you're in the wrong community. If you're here and you're listening to the podcast every day because you're like, I just need to be a little bit better, then now it's time to step the fuck up, get into my $47 product, stop being a cheapskate and listening to free shit all the time and start to put some pressure on yourself, which is I've made a commitment. I'm into this commitment. Then from there, go, what's the next commitment and keep jumping in. That's exactly what I did. That's why it pisses me off when people come to me and they're like, well, you're lucky because you got a McLaren. You're lucky because you've got this, you know, it's a multi-million dollar house on a lake. Yeah, you're lucky. That's not where I started from, motherfucker. I started from getting out of bed at two o'clock in the morning, walking out to the lounge room, dialing an international number, knowing that I wouldn't even be able to put fuel in my car the next day, but knowing that something had to change. And I invested in myself. I invested more than I could afford to make myself better. And I have done that consistently throughout my whole life. So when someone tells me that I'm lucky, I want to punch them right in the fucking head because that's never how it happened. In fact, this year alone, I've been in more times where I've gone, shit, how do I grow my business? Fuck, what do I have to do? I've got to invest more money and I don't have the money to invest at that next level yet, but I have to do it because if you don't do it, you don't grow to the next level. By hiring my business mentor who runs a billion dollar company, having to pay him is extremely tough. But at the same time, if I don't do that, I may never have the opportunity to work with a mentor like that again unless I grow. By bringing on the CFO, the chief financial officer of a billion dollar company into our business, not full time, but just as an advisor, by bringing them on, having to find the money to do that as well. I didn't have that money. I've just hired a marketing agency and having the money to do that. I don't have the fucking money to do that. But the thing is, I don't have the money not to do it either because unless I grow, I'm always going to be stuck at that level. Most of you are waiting until you have something before you do the next level. It doesn't work like that. You commit to the next level, you go through the stress and the adversity, and then you grow to the next level. You need the stress and the adversity to grow, but most of you aren't committing to your next level, which is why you're stuck. You have to commit first, you then go through the adversity, and then after that, you grow out of it. And you know this is true because when you go to the gym and you lift weights, you commit to lifting heavy shit. You lift the heavy shit, it is a struggle, but eventually you get stronger. And then when you're stronger, you do the same thing again. You rinse and repeat. Most of you don't live life like that. You're not walking into the gym of life when your alarm goes off in the morning going, this is going to be heavy to get up. I've only had a couple of hours sleep. I'm struggling, but I'm going to do it anyway. By doing that, you're creating adversity for yourself. That's how you get stronger. If you do that in every area of life, you'll keep winning, but also you have to turn those adversities into a learning and growth experience so that you stay above that line. Because once you start to go below the line, you're going to see it as suffering. I have to go to the gym and I'm suffering through it. I have to eat this way that I'm suffering through it. I have to go to work. I'm suffering through it. And that's not true. You can flip it around with the right mindset and you go, you know what? I'm loving this shit because I wouldn't have the challenge if I wasn't ready for it. So therefore I'm going to work through it. It always works out. It always does. The only thing that never works out is you because you give up. You always go back to your lower level of thinking when shit gets hard, which is why you struggle. You know, I had a client the other week. They've jumped on board my mid-ticket program, 750 for three months, so 750 bucks for three months. They start losing weight. They're doing a great job. Everything's going well. And then all of a sudden, they send me a message and they go, oh, I'm going to just stop because my three months is up. So what the fuck is wrong with you? And they say, well, I just need to be consistent now. And I'm like, it's not about that. It's about you staying committed to it. By you spending money, you know that you're committed to it because how many of you spend money on something and go, I have to do it because I've spent money on it. That's why investing in yourself is important because there's part of you that has to be committed to it. If not, you'll be pissed. Now, most of you are used to giving up. That's why you're afraid to do it. 
I don't do that. When I commit to something, I fucking commit to something. I never used to, but I would waste all of my money hoping that something was going to be a quick fix. Now I invest, I go 100% all in, I give it my all and I keep pushing because I know that that's going to get me to the next level. Anyway, Driven Mofos, make sure you stay above that line. Really listen to the podcast. Watch my Instagrams. When you start making a little bit more money because your life is better, jump into my low ticket product. Get into that. Then after that, straight away when you start implementing, you start doing a little bit better, bang, go to my mid-level. Then as you start winning in that, bang, go to the next level. Keep pushing yourself to the next level. You know, I can't wait one day until I can invest a million dollars into a mentor or a coach. Like I sit there and I think I can't wait until I'm going to invest a million dollars for a year of coaching with someone because I know that I'm probably going to be making 20, 30, 40 million dollars in order to be able to do that. So I'm always looking for that next level. So when my mentor comes to me and says, hey, it's 40K a year US and I'm like, fuck yeah, let's do it. But the first thing I did was I said, look, I don't have that cash sitting in the bank account now. I'm going to put half of it down. I'm going to figure it out. Give me 24 hours. I did it. I went and put part of it on a credit card. I pulled part of it out of some cash that we had sitting around. And then I pulled part of it out of a investing account and bang, I dropped it. From there, it helped me to grow. And then now I'm like, right, I've already got that money back. Now it's time to invest. I'm just going to drop a whole year's worth of cash. So it'll probably be about $60,000 or 55000 Australian dollars to hire this coach for a year. But I, I know that that person has my back. I don't need them every week. I don't need babysitting. What I need is I need someone that when I need it, that person's there. And that's what good coaching and good mentoring is for at a high level. At a low level, you need babysitting. You need someone to check in every fucking day. You need someone to babysit. You need to have your bottom wiped. You need to be, you know, I shouldn't say spanked because some of you enjoy that. But it's just different. At a high level, you're looking for those one small things that implemented over time is going to make big changes. At a low level, you're looking to try to change everything every day. That's why you got to keep stepping up the levels. But anyway, Driven Mofos, my goal of today was to really get you thinking about that midline and staying above that midline. And no matter what the challenge, no matter what the adversity, you have to learn how to frame your mind in a way to keep you winning so that you sit there and go, you know, I fucking love my life because when you love your life, life is going to give you a life that you love or God, Mother Nature, the universe, Yoda, whatever you want to call it. You're going to get the life that you love to live because you've created that life inside your own mind. It's not the external that makes you feel a way. It's how you internalize it. Our whole reality based on both neuroscience, optics, physics, biology, your whole life is created inside your own mind. If I said to you, you've got these cash flow problems or you've got these money problems or you've got a health problem at the moment or whatever it is, you've got a family relationship problem, that's someone else's idea of a fucking dream. I've got some relationship issues in my marriage. Someone else is sitting there going, I wish I was married. I wish I was able to have those relationship problems. So you have to think that every challenge that you're going through is just a perception because that's all that it is. In my Thrive Time event, I spend time going through and showing you how light enters the retina of your eye, goes through into your brain and your brain interprets it as vision and what you see. You think right now you see things, you don't. That is a perception. It is an interpretation that happens within your brain. Sound is just compressions of air. We do not hear people talking. We have compressions of air that hit our eardrum that then get changed into mechanical signals, into electrical signals that then enter the brain. And we then interpret that as sound or someone speaking. So our ears only hear compressions of air. It's compressions. It's sound waves. That's all that it is. It's compressions. Our eyes only see light. They essentially take in light. So our brain has to then interpret the compressions. It has to interpret the electromagnetic waves or the light waves that enter our eyes. And it has to interpret it to try to understand what it means. Pain is an interpretation within the brain. So we don't really experience pain in our body. We experience pain inside our brain because our brain interprets what those electrical and chemical signals mean. So our brain is interpreting our whole reality, but most people don't know how to use their fucking brain. So how is it that you can change your life without changing your brain when your brain interprets the whole of reality? It blows my mind like it is crazy. When you understand the neuroscience and the psychology behind it, and I mean, even a lot of psychologists and mental health professionals have never really studied the neuroscience of how the brain works and how our brain interprets shit. 
So therefore, if you don't know that, then you won't think that the power of your life sits inside your own brain and you'll let everything else influence you, which is why I wanted to do an episode like this because our brain is so powerful and most of you don't use it. If I said to you, if you want to get rich, you've got two choices. You get to go and spend, let's say a thousand bucks on investing in shares or investing in property or an investment, or you get to spend a thousand dollars on your mindset. Most people would take the investment because they think that that's going to make their life better. But the truth is it's not going to change their life at all because their life is an interpretation of what happens inside their brain and how they feel. And you can take a multimillionaire, someone who has millions of dollars in the bank or investments and shit like that, and they can still be fucking miserable because they've always been miserable. And that's the truth. Yet you probably don't realize it because you fantasize and you think that when I have more money, then life's going to be better. Or you might be fantasizing when I have a relationship, life's going to be better. But for anyone who's got a relationship on here, you're like, life's both a struggle, it's pleasurable, a relationship's good and bad. It brings out the best in me, it brings out the worst in me. And you know that that's true, but that's because you've got a relationship. When you've got money, you realize that both money brings out the best and the worst in you. It's both pleasure and pain. It, it creates more struggle, it creates more adversity, but also it can create more fun and more pleasure. It depends on how you use it. Unless you think through these things, you will never get to enjoy life at the level that you want. So guys, change your mind, change your fucking life. That's the truth. Invest in changing it. For anyone who wants to invest in themselves, shoot me a message with the word coaching on my Instagram page. Let's have a chat. Let's get you stepping up to that next level. I guarantee when you invest in yourself, you're never going to go backwards. You can only move forwards. So look, hit me up on Instagram, send me the word coaching. Let's have a chat. Let's see how we can help you to win and let's get you moving forward. Let's get ready to step it up. That's what this year is all about. Stepping it up to a whole nother level. Let's go. Anyway, Driven Mofos, have a great day. Keep kicking ass. And I'll see you on the next episode of The Underestimated Entrepreneur if I don't chat to you on Instagram, which I fucking hope you do because it's time to step it up. Let's go. Most people waste their life and I just don't want you to be one of them.